Pigeons get a bad rap, Larry. Yeah. You know, they they seem like a nuisance. They, they, they're always wandering around. They're supposed to be, you know, dirty. And anyway, there's a new book that's hoping to change all that. A pocket guide to pigeon watching, getting to know the world's most misunderstood bird. It's written by Rosemary Roscoe, a bird lover, writer, and it's Moscow, actually, Ros Rosemary Moscow. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. It's great to be here and Boy, talk about pigeons. Yeah, I got to tell you, if you would have asked me, are we going to do a, uh, a segment about pigeons? You would, I would have said no. But this is fascinating. It, it's actually very interesting. The stuff you talk about in this book because they're really people not big fans of the pigeons. Yeah, they're they're generally really not. Uh, but I think that's because of a lot of misunderstandings. I mean, pigeons are domestic animals, just like all the dogs and cats that we love so much. It's just that people have forgotten, you know, why they were domesticated and why they're around the city. So we just see them as kind of gross. And I think that's a shame. Well, I know pigeons have had some some uses over the years, and maybe you can talk about that. But in the city, when you're overrun by them, it's not so fun. How do they get to the city in such mass numbers? Oh, yeah, that's such a good question. So in the wild, pigeons like to nest in um, in on beautiful cliff sides. Like imagine, you know, the wind blowing through their feathers as they're standing on a cliff by the sea. And so they nest in little holes in cliffs. And a city is basically a bunch of high cliffs with little holes in them. So that's kind of their perfect environment. And then they really want to be near the people who domesticated them and all of our, you know, discarded hot dog buns and food. So when you say we got domesticated, does that mean someone had them as a pet? And that's and then all of a sudden, twenty thousand pigeons know that that one pigeon was a pet. Sort of, yeah. So they were domesticated in the Middle East um, five thousand plus years ago. We don't really know when, so it's a really long relationship. And what happens is wherever they get carried, they wind up going stray. Um, you know, just like a stray dog or a cat. So all of those pigeons in the city, they're all just kind of descendants of those stray birds. But yeah, they were domesticated for their meat, and their their poop was actually really useful as fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Um, they carried messages during the World Wars. They're just way more useful than they definitely appear at first glance. Now, they all look the same to me. Are, are, are they different? Are there big differences among the different, bur different breeds of uh, pigeon? Yeah, that's one of the most fun things about pigeon watching, I think, is that because, you know, you can think of them as a stray cat or a stray dog, they're basically mutts. So they come in a mix of colors because of those different fancy breeds. So they come in whites and, and you know, beautiful speckled patterns and reds and blues. And I mean, I think they can be pretty gorgeous. They're not exactly a rainbow, but but they're they're interesting to look at. And they also, there's something about they, they mate for life and they're very very affectionate with each other more than yeah, you think? Yeah, they are kind of romantic idols, <laughs> if you think about it. I mean, they mate for life. They dance and sing for each other. They they co-parent. Um, they keep the romance alive by sort of kissing, although really they're just kind of locking their beaks and sort of puking in each other's oh, mouths. Oh, great. Oh, nice. They're, they're, they're know, very sweet and romantic, just in not not in a way that we're especially familiar Rosemary, with. Rosemary, I got to find out how you figure, how you come to write a whole book about pigeons. I'm looking at the pictures behind you. It looks like you got, is that like a bug on the wall behind you there or something? <laughs> Yeah, I love all of the unloved animals, and I grew up in cities, in all sorts of, you know, different cities all around U the U.S. and Canada, and I also watch birds. So if you do those, you know, two different things, you can't help but start noticing the pigeons. And at first, I found them kind of boring and gross, but the more I looked at them, the more yeah. excited I got about them. How do they detect tumors? Oh, yeah, we have trained them to do wild things in the lab. Huh. But one of them is if you look, um, if you have them look at microscope slides of cancerous tissue or non cancerous tissue, they can tell the difference, which is really cool. But you're probably not going to see them, you know, in a little lab coat at your uh, local cancer center. Hopefully. Wow. Well, it's uh, it's actually fascinating stuff. You could check out this virtual event at the bookseller November 16th at 7 p.m. For more, go to booksellerinc.com or follow Rosemary on her website. There's the info on your screen. Rosemary, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for letting me Take chat care. about pigeons. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>